What is up everybody, it's your boy Verter here and thank you so much for stopping by ladies and gentlemen. Now let's not lie to each other. It's very important today's day and not just that, every single Friday after uh, the very very controversial dev talk will be one of the most important global lab patches coming through uh, in my opinion in history of video because well the game is in the roughest state it has ever been, the community is more than divided, it's, it's an understatement how divided we are based on where are you in this entire thing and some people who are objective like me we kind of get a little bit of the worst of both parties to begin with but nonetheless we have to talk about global labs we have to talk about the future of the game and most importantly really just pay close attention to Pearl Abyss's changes which will be arriving and as they've let us know into the global labs sorry into the dev talk then of course we are to expect quite quite a few very noticeable changes um, for Black Desert so Let's move very quickly into the latest iteration of Global Labs. We'll be reading through it, the developer note, everything that has to do with Black Desert. We are going to go through it thoroughly, examine it and see potentially just on a, on a Prima Vista level what will and how will it impact uh, Black Desert. So let's talk about the very first thing which they share with us. The in June update, we revamped the accuracy slash evasion system. Now when evasion is successful, you see a miss and take less damage. Today Today's Global Labs update fixed the issue where special damage and quote unquote miss weren't both displayed when they are cured simultaneously. We focused on resolving instances where critical hits and evasion happen together and we're addressing other special damage cases. We apologize for not notifying adventurers about these changes in advance and for any confusion they may have caused. This is 100% true. See. For um, ever since this patch really came through, the particular evasion change patch with the DR revamp and all of those things, players have been noticing how some of their abilities just simply failed to hit and how that notification is not really going through. I noticed this in particular with my Awakening Maego when I'm playing Tungrat Ruins, how some of the times, even though um, presumably I am accuracy capped, some of the times that damage just doesn't come through, but however you do see notification that a critical hit occurred. And it confused players and the fact that this here is actually being addressed even though very very late is still a very good thing to see this confusion being eradicated rather eliminated it's very very good so let's continue moving down a little bit the miss indicator has been modified to display even when critical hit and evasion occur simultaneously as before if a critical hit and evasion occur simultaneously the damage increased by the critical hit is reduced by the amount of damage caused by the evasion this is essentially the new uh, the new evasion we work instead of full misses partial uh, the appearance of the character uh, coming down from the ladder has been improved to move more naturally. Uh, we we kind of jumped into something else, I'm not really sure what this means. But um, with that being said, a few issues here uh, with, with Wizard, with Dark Knight, with, with Lon, with Guardian, with the Taoist, I think that's, uh, I think Taoist, wasn't Taoist? Tamer? I think it is. So those are pretty much just little side notes and side to side fixes over there, nothing really noticeable um, in the grand scheme of things. And we have to move in into, let's just be honest, one of the most important bits of this, and we have to talk about Node Wars. See, a lot of the hatred which came through Pearl Abyss is with the new Node War system, the fact that it wasn't really um, a skill-based matchup, it was more an, an RNG-based uh, matchup, and not that few cases where guilds uh, including I've been in this situation where guilds that did not deserve to win the node war just last second they just take the fort they just take it away take the stick and now they win the node war so they reap the healthy rewards now with that being said let's see what they have for today in the occupation wars comma base war the number and ability limits for the territory group where the base war is held has been changed now we're seeing balanos and serendia go from uh, I believe from tier 1, I think this is to tier 4, the damage reduction rate goes 28% with the accuracy to 900, I think this was tier 4 capped. Okay, so we're going to see Medea and Valencia go into an uncapped fully, and we're going to see Calfion and Camasilvia be introduced 
used as a tier one tier two cap now or was it just tier one cap now this is very very interesting and i do not believe for a single bit that this is um this was absolutely mandatory but a little bit of reshuffling i think every once in a while is not going to be a bad thing i think also something which kind of uh, gets into my mind is camasylvia node wars being the precedent for all the tier ones tier twos etc i think that that's not a bad idea simply because well war of the roses is a thing and if you're trying to promote at the very least a, cer a certain part of war of the roses then having regular node wars onto the place which or rather the terrain where war of the roses also partakes is a good way to introduce people to that a little bit of a um, how can I say a little bit of that um, a comfort zone in terms of that place? So you you've been there, you know what it is. The Janelle being from the Camasil, you know you're fighting with them. So I don't think this is a bad change. Not really uh, an interesting one, but a reshuffle every once in a while. I don't see an issue with it. The level of fortresses in the territory where the base war is taking place has been changed. You can see Crown Castle from one to four. All of these things you you get to see um, from Balinosa Serendia, the tier caps. This is basically all of the particular. Zones zones with all of the particular changes to them downgrades upgrades tier tier switches etc etc in Camasylvia, sylvia we're gonna see that the, you know they're still tier ones from tier five you know you get, get to see you get to see all of the steps which are which are being taken over here which is very very interesting now one thing which i noticed from this is you know if you've been a cannoneer in a very uh, competitive guild you know there is there are crosshairs with certain bits of information on top in order for you to be able to calculate the travel time of the projectile and where that will actually land a very 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 cool thing uh that are they're introducing is a cannon impact point indication it's going to come through a ping and this ping in particular will very much ease up the entry level for cannoneers to go from afar and to be able to assist within the node war so now you will get to see where that particular cannon shot landed for you and we also get to see it on a world map, as you can see, they're showing it over here with the gift. Now, this is very cool. I have no issues with this whatsoever. Yes, it's going to make the cannoneer uh, role very simple, pretty much simplified to the maximum. And you will not really have those uh, crosshairs and all of those regular side overlays that people are using in order for them to shoot the cannon properly. But still, I think that this is a very good change because it's ease of access. Um, let's talk a little bit about the content. Now, we have a little bit of a mention here, Imperial Craft. Crafting delivery NPC and Imperial Fishing delivery NPC have been added to Middle Village, Nampo County of the Morning Light. So basically to the um, particular places in Land of the Morning Light, which, let's be honest, these places still lack uh, one of the most important bits in order to make Land of the Morning Light towns, pretty much hubs for people. And I'm seeing these things and those are very cool. A title that can be acquired by defeating monsters in the Ulukita area has been added. Now this is very cool. Um, personally, I love these titles and I love most of them I, in fact i i use many of these for my alt characters and if there's something you know the rising light of dawn like that's very very cool and to be fair these are of course coming way too late these should have been up and running from the very get-go um but also something that people do not know is that many of these titles they kind of most of the times not that much to be fair with you but some of the times maybe approaching most of the times they also tell a little bit of story you know, we have like the rising light of dawn. Like, why are you getting this from Dark Followers? Uh, sorry, from Dark Seekers Retreat. Of course, we'll see the exact titles once they are fully translated to come around us. But they're a very cool addition, which also could tell a little bit of story. I like these. Now, we have a very, very, very important feature, ladies and gents. And it's something that we've been talking about. It's something that's been kind of teased, told to us. And, of course, we're finding a, finally finding a use for uh, Crystallized Despair. So, the ability to exchange items for Enhancement Probability Increase has been expanded. The Enhancement Probability Increase Value ex Exchangeable... Th sorry. The Enhancement Probability Increase Value Exchangeable through Blackstone has been increased to a maximum of plus 45. This is the stack. It has been added that the reinforcement probability increase value can be exchanged to up to plus 100 through crystallized despair. To simplify this, you will be able to get a 100 stack for a certain number of crystallized despair. And as we can see, it takes 50 for a 100 stack. It takes... Um, 
35 for a 90, 25 for an 80, etc, etc. This is a very cool addition. If you're somebody who is in Black Desert right now, you probably know that Crystallized Despair, they're sitting on the bare minimum and there is nothing you can do about that minimum outside of just simply hoping that somebody would buy it. This is not just a Crystallized Despair exclusive things. There are many other resources in Black Desert Online which really stay there and they are just crashed forever and ever. And I think using these resources to feed the Black Spirit with um with uh, with stacks i think this is a perfect addition and this definitely resolves the crystallized despair so as you can see over here this is the exact table of how much of what you can get now we are increasing a 45 we're going to get sorry from 40 to a 45 vault chance for 406 black stones and of course the crystallized despair anywhere from 40 to 50 stacks to 50 uh, crystallized despair for a hundred stack and this is really really good now, uh, we've been seeing a little bit of changes over here for the live skilling, and um, apparently there has been an issue with, with where the acquisition location was incorrectly indicated in the item description for some of the mushrooms. An issue where the acquisition method was incorrectly provided on the item description for some of these mushrooms. So they're finally fixing this. Now, this has been not that much of an issue, but to see a little bit of attention being thrown in, especially something like this, it's definitely welcome. Now, let's talk about monsters and basically PVEing anywhere from uh, the storyline up until the extreme endgame. The attack power of monsters summoned during the battle with Karanda, who appears in the main questline from the Jordan Saga, has been reduced approximately from 10% to 15%. Now, this might be very, very silly for some people, but believe it or not, the new fresh players in video who, who are not really following strictly the progression line, they are actually struggling with these. So, a little polishing that experience, the first bit of video is, you know, the first face uh, the first face experience with with video is very very important and having these adjusted having these addressed very good Very important and I have no issue with this whatsoever The attack range has been uh, has been improved to be displayed when a strong strike is made by gathering the energy of the right hand During the Calfian Street battle with Muraka in the Jordine saga basically all of those things over here They are being addressed for the sakes of the new player experience and we should never be opposed to this the new player experience is very 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 important important. Now, we have something uh, here which I am a little bit underwhelmed of because, to be completely fair, uh, Dekia Kadri is, is busted. Dekia Kadri is busted. Now, before we go into this, let me just tell you why it's busted. See, ladies and gents, Dekia Kadri is an incredibly aggro sufficient spot. You'll be wasting, sorry, you'll be spending up to 15k aggress for the hour and you'll be making on an average of 2, 2.1 billion um, once you just really start understanding the spot and once you start capping. However, the Dekia Dekia Kadri has one or two issues. The one issue is that things deal incredible amounts of damage, especially the Kadri Knight. The second issue is the fact that no matter where your horse is, it could be literally on the edge of the map, they will try to chase it. They, for whatever reason, just decide to go for your horse first, and that, of course, wastes a lot of your time. So, let's read through this. In the Kadri ruins of the Dekia's Lantern Monster Zone, where you need to defeat all nearby enemies, parked mounts, or passing adventures could sometimes attract stray monsters. To address this, we've improved the system so that monsters now chase the nearest target, which is very, very cool and very, very welcome. One thing has been fixed. The second thing is really, to be fair, the aggress acquisition, as much as it's fun and we can grind there for a long period of times, uh, it's busted. It's busted. It's one of the most profitable spots in the game right now simply because of this particular change. The monsters appear in the Kadri ruins have been approved to chase closer enemies. The Kadri commander, this is the, the, the Kadri knight guy, has been improved to appear more quickly after the appearance message of the Kadri ruins that kill lantern. Yes, this was a very good change which I didn't mention earlier, but there seems to be like a 5 to, to 10 seconds delay for the Kadri Knight. You just sit there and you wait for the guy and also he triggers an animation that slows you down, etc, etc. So they are addressing this. We have a little bit of knowledge changes for the story of Land of the Morning Light, which we will not, not touch upon over here. And we will be moving straight up into the background NPC and effect cutscenes. 
and we will be reading the developer's note. We've made some tweaks to the landscape to help adventurers enjoy smoother gameplay. This includes adjusting auto-navigate routes for horses, moving fences, and altering the depth of water puddles in certain monster zones. These changes were made based on the feedback from our adventurers via the official website and support. We plan to continue this effort, and we thank all of adventurers who shared their thoughts with us. So we will be seeing um, for Dekia Olens, 23 terrain and objects have been changed, including including the hunting ground below, the main path for automatic horse movement, and the spiral wooden stairs. So the Dekia, one of the Dekia particular spots people have been complaining about, uh, it's a little bit of a cosmetic thing, right? But but most of the times that also has a little bit of an effect onto your system, how it operates, because you're rendering different bits of the game. So with that being said, we're seeing those adjusted, there is not no issue with this, we always like seeing those polishes arriving, and this is all of the particular places where this is happening. Happening. Anywhere from taking unnecessary terrain out to just polishing those particular places. We have a UI change, an issue where the family names, input UI and popular appearances application UI on the character creation screen overlap depending on the interface setting of the movements. First time I hear about it, but glad that they're fixing some of the small stuff as well. Um, it has been added that you can proceed with the enhancement probability increase tutorial when accepting the Calfion Relic of the Bridge quest. Um, etc etc there is a brand new ui function uh, in the form and expanded list has been improved such as market filters and warehouse material transportations when expanded ui is collapsed and reopened the previously selected item is displayed and there is a scrolling it is expanded from the last scroll as you can see we're going through he's clicking over here and now they're clicking again and it's functioning as intended that's good 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 and here comes to the last fixes of uh, basically these are very very specific which we never go through but you can find them yourself in the global labs patch down below into the description now overall what do i think about this global labs patch well ladies and gents um, let's get our let's get our expectations set up properly. We will not be getting the craziest of the crazy in an instant. We know Pearl Abyss have heard us. We know that they are very very panicked. We know that uh, half of the half of the uh, Black Desert Online player base is in hard copium, and I would prefer to be in that place rather than just straight up uh, raw dog in the game. <laughs> for full, just sorry for the comment, but I would prefer to have hope for BDO rather than to be a doomer. And I've been historically a doomer myself, but um, with all honesty, seeing this change, a little bit of variation being introduced, a little bit of addressing some issues, a little bit of polishing the game, it's always, always welcome. Now, I have very high hopes for the next one. Overall, this one is kind of mid, but still, it addressed and it, it, it kind of helped people. Ease of access to Node Wars, never a bad thing. Addressing new player experience, never a bad thing. Overall, even though it's mid for me as an endgame player, I think it's good for the game. So tell me what you think down below, and we will be seeing you on stream, Twitch, TV, slash Verdict Loves You, and I do hope to see you there as soon as possible. Bye-bye, guys. Much love, and I'll see you soon.